Welcome to European Journeys. This is the third stage of a series in which we explore some of the lives of the Walloons that changed the world. These were people who lived between the 16th and the 17th centuries. They had adopted the Reformed faith and for that reason they were expelled from their lands or they had to flee in order to be able to practice their faith freely into lands where that would be allowed. And usually they became a blessing to those lands. And so uh, we want to explore these lives and especially uh, starting from the places where they came from, that is in modern day Belgium or even the north of France. And so for this stage we are visiting the city of Liège, which is located not so far from Germany, from the Netherlands and from Luxembourg in the eastern part of the country of Belgium. Now Liège used to be a prince bishopric that was a particular type of a uh, political setting because it was a principality in which the prince was in fact a bishop and that lasted for about a thousand years and um, the exact location we are going to visit today is in the suburb called Avrois and that is a church which is called Église Sainte Véronique de Liège. Now there was a church there already towards the end of the 8th century, but the church that you see there on the picture was built in the 19th century, in 1848. And in fact, if we stare a little bit on the picture, you will realize that there are four colonnades on its facade. Now, that typical from the 19th century, where there was a revival of belief in the in a return somehow to the uh, Greek times, uh, the pre-Christian Greek times, so there was a certain fascination at the time and that's expressed in this architecture obviously. But these four colonnades in fact uh, look very much alike the colonnades that we find in front of the famous Cathedral Saint-Pierre of Geneva, the Cathedral Saint-Pierre of Geneva. And that is uh, quite remarkable. I'm not sure that it was done on purpose but in fact the Cathedral Saint-Pierre is obviously linked with John Calvin. And the person we are going to talk about today uh, had a clear connection with John Calvin, and we're going to uh, discover why. So somehow this uh, resemblance of these two churches is quite remarkable, even though it was probably not planned to be so. So who is the person we're going to talk about today? Well, it's a lady, and her name was Idolette de Bure. And the reason we're choosing this church is because it was probably there that she married in the 1530s, in the early 1530s, her husband who was named Jean Storder. He was a man from Liège as well. And uh, it's probably there. Historians have not agreed really. It's maybe uh, they did not get married there, but that's the area where she grew up, where she was born, where she grew up. And so uh, maybe, probably, uh, they got married in that church. So, who was she and what's the connection with John Calvin? Well, as I said, she was born in Liège, in, probably in the year 1506. And that's an important year for Liège because that's when uh, the Bishop Erard de Lamarck was elected as Prince of Liège. Now, that's an important figure because he was one of the most ferocious enemies of the Reformation and was very committed to approve the Reformation and when it began to uh, spread in Liège. Now, Idolette de Bure uh, very probably met the Reformed faith very early in her life. Now, the Reformation arrived towards the end of the 1510s, so she was a teenager. Uh, she was uh, maybe a young adult already, uh, but uh, she met the Reformed faith very, very early. And so, obviously, uh, she did not live in a very safe environment. Uh, in Liège anymore as a, a believer, uh, as someone who had adopted the Reformation. As I said, she got married in the early 1530s with an Anabaptist, which was another Reformation movement, also ferociously opposed by the Prince of Liège, and they married in the early 1530s. Well, the persecution arose very strongly during that decade in Liège, and that forced them to flee Liège, and uh, they fled in 1533. They had two little children already. And uh, we don't find traces of them until 1537, where we find them in Geneva. Here is the first connection with John Calvin. 
But uh, in Geneva, the Anabaptists were not quite welcomed either. But uh, John Calvin was willing to talk with Jean Storder, who was one of the leaders of the Anabaptist movement, in fact. And so they had a debate. But the debate turned... Uh, was not uh, did not have a good outcome for Jean Storder. John Calvin won the debate, and so they were expelled from Geneva. There was no freedom of religion anywhere in the world at the time, freedom of faith, as we may understand it today. That was not at all uh, existent at the time. So they had to flee, and we find them in Strasbourg. But here is the irony. Not a long time after their arrival in Strasbourg, John Calvin arrived there too because he was expelled from Geneva for other reasons. He ended up in Strasbourg and he became the pastor of the French church. That was a reformed church there in Strasbourg where Jean Storder and Idolette de Bure had already joined the church. Even though it was a reformed church, they were Anabaptists, but uh, the Anabaptist movement began to show signs that were pretty unbiblical. Uh, things that began to cool down Jean Storder and his wife. And so they attended the church of the man who was the cause of their expulsion from Geneva. Uh, but a relationship began to uh, be created between Jean Storder and John Calvin. And uh, they talked together extensively. And finally, Jean Storder adopted the reform phase, the reform phase that is the one that was advocated by John Calvin. Calvin baptized Jean Storder and Idolette de Bure and the children. But very soon after, the plague uh, broke out in Strasbourg and killed Jean Storder. That was in the early 1540s, just after the baptism. Now, John Calvin was a man who had, uh, who had almost given up the hope of getting married. He had uh, seen many ladies, but none of them really uh, fit his his expectations. He was a busy man, a reformer, that was not easy probably for him to find the appropriate wife. But finally, Idolette de Bure um, apparently fit his, uh, fitted his desires or his uh, what he expected. And so they got married um, half a year after the death of Jean Storder there in Strasbourg. A few years later, they moved back to Geneva, where John Calvin was called back, and so he brought back Idolette de Bure, that same lady that had been expelled from Geneva as well. And so they came together and um, established themselves near the cathedral of Geneva, where uh, today still we can visit that house, the Maison Calvin, there in Geneva. And uh, she became a busy lady. Now, John Calvin was a busy man. He was there busy preaching and uh, teaching the word of God, reforming the city. But Idolette was, uh, was not idle, if I can use that uh, pun. She was also very busy hosting people who would come into their home. Many people would come there into their home. She would practice hospitality, but also she visited the sick. She visited the poor and she helped the poor. She... Uh, in fact, was very active in the practical works of what the gospel requires. And that leads me to talk about uh, a model that was established by Jean and Idolette de Bure, a bit similar than what uh, Martin Luther and his wife, Katharina von Bora, did in Germany. Before the Reformation, the ideal was that uh, the idea was monasticism, that is um, chastity, that is celibacy, and going into a monastery. Monasteries became the providers of health care or welfare or even education in some cases. That the Reformation will turn uh, upside down. The monastic ideal was not at all accepted by the Reformers. For them, the Bible did not prohibit marriage for priests or for pastors, and so both Luther and Calvin uh, became some of the early role models for new Christian way of living, a new Christian lifestyle in which pastors can get married. And so that couple really modeled a new a model of Christian family that would begin to reshape the Protestant nations. That is, the husband, busy uh, with the work of the church, with the work of the Reformation, and at the same time the wife, busy with 
um, uh, with hospitality, with caring for the poor, caring for the sick, that is providing welfare and health care. And that really became the uh, building blocks of the Protestant nations that would, uh, that these nations that would adopt the Reformation. The family would become the, the strongest building block of those, of those uh, nations. Well, their marriage didn't last long, in fact, because uh, Idoret got sick very quickly after their, uh, their wedding in 1542, and seven years later, in 1549, she passed away. But the writings of John Calvin show that she was a godly woman. Uh, he loved her deeply, and he missed her a lot, obviously, uh, after she passed away. So that's for Idoret de Bure. Sadly, here in Liège, uh, there is hardly any sign of uh, uh, honoring her, really. And so the best place we can uh, explore is this church, where maybe she uh, got married with her first husband. Jean Stoddart was maybe there that uh, they got married, but in fact, that's the area where she grew up. So she certainly saw this church, but there's uh, hardly anything else that we can say about Idolet de Bure in Liège. And yet she was from Liège. So she is a person that ought to be remembered in Liège. I'm Cedric Placentino. See you next week for another stage of European Journeys. Bye.